1332, Chapter 7, Consumer Mathematics, Section 2, Personal Budgeting. Video 6, Prorating Long-Term Expenses. In the last example in the previous video, we kind of touched on this a little bit when we talked about the uh, dining plan being four months over a given semester or having uh, semi-annual payments for renter's insurance. When you have expenses that occur infrequently, twice a year, four times a year, once per year, once every two years, there's a tendency to wait until the due date is approaching to start worrying about those expenses. The problem with that is that you're, the longer you wait, the shorter time frame you're giving yourself to accumulate the money, the income, to cover those expenses. One way to prevent putting yourself in a financial budget, financial crunch, excuse me, is to plan in advance and save each month so that you have what you need when you need it. I should point out that in the budgets that we created in the previous video, we did not list savings as an expense. It's always a good idea to put some money away in savings because maybe you're saving it for a specific future expense or maybe you're saving it for a future emergency that you don't know about. But trust me, I've been there. Having the money in savings to cover unanticipated expenses is so much better than not having the money there. Trust me, trust me, trust me. All right, let's take a look at a couple of examples of pro prorating long-term expenses by basically asking, what do we have to save each month so we're ready to pay this when the time is right? Prorate the long-term expenses into monthly savings. How much do we need to save each month to cover these things? Car insurance. We pay $295.40 every six months. Tuition and fees, $3,804 annually. Books and supplies, $530 twice a year. All right. That's funny because the car insurance is also twice a year. It's just phrased differently. To convert these into monthly savings, we need to um, figure out how much a month each one of these is. I'm not going to use Microsoft Excel on these. We're just going to do the math. Let's start with car insurance. Every six months, we have to pay $295.40. So it should be clear that to get our monthly obligation, or rather what we need to save, we need to divide this by six. And that will tell us how much we need to save each month leading into the six months before we have to pay that. $49.23 is actually this, which kind of brings up a rounding issue. It would round down to $49.23. The problem with rounding it down is that all of the rounding down that we did would have a cumulative effect and at the end of six months, we would actually have a little bit less than what we need. Granted, it would only be less than by two cents. In other words, if we saved 49.23 per month, then in six months, we would have $295.38. Doubt the two cents will break us. But whenever you're saving for a prorated future expense, it's always a good idea to round up your value, even if it would normally round down. That means your final payment or your final monthly savings will bring it more than what you need instead of less. If you've ever paid off a car, you'll see this phenomenon. You'll get these monthly payments, but the last monthly payment is usually less because when they calculated the monthly payment, they rounded it up instead of down, even if it was supposed to round down so that the last payment would be less and not more. All right, so that being said, we're going to use $49.24. Well, you know what? I don't know if the online homework would want you to round normally or always round up. I'm sorry I didn't check that. I'm going to write the rounding answer. The rounded answer would be $49.23. All right. The tuition and fees are $3,804 annually. We want to convert it to monthly. That's for a year. We need months. There are 12 months in a year. We're going from years down to months, so we need to divide to make it smaller. $3,804 divided by 12. I believe this will divide evenly. $3,804 divided by 12. 
is exactly $317. We'll put and zero cents. And then for books and supplies, uh, 400, excuse me, $530 twice a year, that's once every six months. We can either double it to make it per year and divide by 12, but since twice a year means for six months, we can just take 530 and divide it by six. 530 divided by six, and this will not come out evenly, but it does round to $88.33. rounds down to that. So let's see what we get when we add those. 49.23 plus 317 plus 88.33 is $454.56. I think I might have mispressed one of the numbers, so I'm going to add them up again real quick just to make sure. Yes. All right. So if we want to plan ahead for these expenses when they, when they appear, we need to save $454.56 a month. And if you think that's a lot to save per month, it's not. Where can you find that money? Look at your, uh, your luxury expenses. All right, let's take one more. This one's more from a business perspective. Uh, business liability insurance is $2,140 every six months. Property tax is $3,461.45 every six months. Workers' compensation coverage is $1,280 every three months. Thought you wanted to run a business? Hope you're ready to shell out a lot of money frequently. Phone's acting stupid. Okay, so we need to convert all these to monthly. This will be pretty easy because if we're doing this much every six months, we just divide by six. This much every six months, we divide by six, and this much every three months, we divide by three. So $2,140 divided by six is not gonna come out evenly, so we'll round it. $356.67. The property tax, $3,461.45. Is also paid every six months, so we divide that by six, and this one also not divide evenly. If you're wondering how I knew that, I'll tell you in a second. It rounds to $576.91 per month. The reason I knew it wasn't going to divide evenly, if you're divisible by six, then you have to be divisible by three, because six is three times two. And there's a trick for looking at a number and knowing if it's divisible by three if the sum of its digits are divisible by three. The sum of the digits on this one were 10, 10, and three, which was 23, which is not divisible by three. The sum of the digits up here was seven, which is not divisible by three. So if you're not divisible by three, you have no chance of being divisible by six. But that's how I knew it wasn't gonna divide evenly. All right, speaking of dividing by three, our workers' compensation coverage is $1,280, but that's paid every three months. Is that number divisible by three? Some of the digits is 11, so the answer is no. And by the way, that trick only works for three and nine. If the sum of the digits is divisible by three, so is the number, same thing with nine. But those are the only numbers it works for. $426.67. So the total, $356.67, plus $576.91, plus $426.67. I got a total of $1,360.25. I'm gonna check it by subtracting each from that sum and it should take it back down to zero. Minus 426.67, minus 576.91, minus 356.67, and it takes me back to zero. If I run this business, I have to put that much aside each month just to pay future expenses. Yeah, you need money to run a business. All right, and that not, not only wraps up this section, but it also wraps up this, excuse me, that not only wraps up this video, but it also wraps up this section.